Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Purdue SigBot Slam and Jam Vexu event. Check in with Devils coming in from UW South. This team has a really cool set of robots and some really cool features as well too. Custom PCB that we'll be jumping more into, but I love this belay system that they're using to start the match uh, as well too to get that goal rush. Really cool and innovative and surprising more teams are doing it. Maybe they will now, you never know. Uh, more stuff on this, a lot of 3D printed, a 3D printed chassis actually that we'll be diving more into. And we'll be following that ring journey, covering some other great aspects as well. So let's learn more about Devils coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. And let's dive into this robot here. Talking about you're running a, a 10 motor drivetrain, so I'd love to hear more about that, the chassis you're rocking, and then a little bit more on your Mogo Mac too. Perfect, yeah, so to start off with, this is PJ, our 15 inch robot. So these robots are pretty much identical, but except for some key components used in our Goal Rush as seen in the 24. But this one features a 10 motor drive with a fully 3D printed chassis. Surprisingly, it's worked very well, but the main basis of this robot is modularity. Uh, so that's why you can kind of see these segments here. Uh, and because of our ability to 3D print, we can definitely um, optimize our time building and reiterating as fast as we can. Uh, we don't have to replace the main components. So that's why you see these seams here, uh, mainly with how the motors are mounted as well. They're flush in the 3D prints, which allows us to utilize more space here, seen with our odometry. Um, these use a custom linear slide to allow us to track our movements on the field a lot better than the motor encoders themselves. I think moving on from there, if we flip her around and look at our Mogo Max. So this is our main way of interfacing with these mobile goals. Now we wanted a very, very direct way of ensuring that we do not lose control of these goals. So we use a locking linkage system, which is fully 3D printed as well to make sure we can have that perfect geometry every time. We utilize two screws here. We kind of call them vampire teeth because they really bite in. They kind of hang lower than the goal. And um, they allow us to almost get a very, very secure grab into this. We haven't had any issues with losing a goal yet this match. Uh, we have had people try and pull us away, but uh, with our 10 motor drive, it, it proves to be very difficult to at least take it away from the devil bots. Something I want to ask you to go back to that custom chassis. Um, what has your experimentation been like in regards to using mostly 3D printed material for a chassis? Like, have you had any big cracks or structure failures or anything like that at all? Oh yeah, there has definitely been some cracks or structural fa structural failures. I mean, not tangle this one up here. Moving to the front of it, if I flip around. The front of the road, we've seen parts completely explode. If you want to lift up the arm, Austin. Thank you. So these here, we usually use draft PLA because we go through a lot. We went through about 10 kilos so far in the past four months. Uh, but these ones here are ABS because of how violent we are with this robot against the wall, against other goals, against other robots. And these take a beating, but with ABS, we're able to refine and swap out these components very fast. Um, which is a simple screw set, and it just goes right back on. It's hard to plan for robots with physical bricks in them too sometimes, right? Exactly, exactly. And we found that out the hard way, especially with our arm here. We can talk more about it later, but it, you know, it, it took a beating on this robot. It is still split in half, held in with super glue and bolts the other way. But it works right now, and we're still... We're still kicking it. Well, if you want to donate to the upgraded PLA fund, we'll post that Venmo link in the uh, yes. description of the video as well too with that. Let's pass it over to uh, Eli, talk more about that arm uh, and then uh, just how this all functions as well. You know, watching on the field, very effective for that. And I like the claw that you're utilizing as well too. Yeah, so our arm, uh, it serves two purposes. Obviously, we take rings. Um, can somebody man the controller here? Aiden, where's the, okay. Yeah, so obviously we can grab rings from the floor. And you notice, can you let go here? We have these screw points um, to grab the rings instead of something like rubber or a flat, large contact surface area. Because we found that when you're going for that high alliance neutral wall stake, it's better if this ring can pivot a little bit because the geometry of our arm is such that the ring is kind of sitting vertical when we're at that height and you need it to be like horizontal to get it down on the stake. So we found that this passive pivot that those screws provide allows that um, to happen naturally. And then, um, can you can lower the arm, Austin. Lower it. And then uh, the second thing it does is it allows us to intake these rings without knocking them um, away. So can you run that? 
intake? Yeah. So these two plates here, they just keep the ring from flying off and in this direction, contain it in the robot. And I want to ask you about match strategy a little bit on this. Uh, the last match we just saw, you had this yes. clutch play, putting the uh, uh, ring up on the uh, Mogo really last second. You just talk to me a little about that experience. Yes, we did. Yeah. So this. That's the great thing about having this arm. It's super versatile because you can raise it up to any height you want. So we can do mobile goals. We can do alliance specific stake. We can do neutral wall stake. Um, and we can also knock goals over with the arm. We can right uh, tip them back up. So yeah, it's just proven to be a really versatile mechanism for us. Very multifunctional. Anything else you want to cover on this? Um, I think that's about it for the arm. All right, let's pass over to Eva to talk uh, more about uh, how this intake's working as well, too, uh, and utilizing the hooks uh, as well. I'd love to just hear a brief overview of uh, what all goes into this. So um, these uh, hooks are uh, made out of uh, 3D printed, made out of flexible TPU. Um, it's less brittle than PLA would be, um, so that'll prevent that from breaking. Uh, we also and the uh, curve geometry helps pick the rings up too. Uh, we also had issues with um, the chain itself uh, separating. So um, if this gets caught on something, it'll pop the chain open. And um, that usually doesn't happen, but um, our robot can still function like this. Um, and uh, in a previous match before we installed the string, we had a chain um, fall off and get caught in a drive chain. Um, so this, um, it's looped around um, each link and then around the outside of the link and then onto the next link um, so that vents, um, we had its tails get um, tangled in the sprocket too. So. Have you had to redo or reapply the string or anything like that or has it held up pretty well for you? Um, we had a couple issues um, around where the hooks are attached. Um, what we ended up doing is just doing string on the second side for a small segment to reinforce it. Before we go into the program, I want to pass it back to uh, Aiden real quick and talk about, uh, we mentioned earlier, you guys have this really uh, cool system for starting out the match and then getting that MoGo rush. So walk me through what you guys have for that. This is really neat. Yeah, so we, in our match analysis, we determined that the goal rush is one of the most important things because if you lose that in Vex U, especially with the offset number of goals on that center line, it can definitely swing a match. So we wanted to make sure that we can reach that goal as fast as we can, as soon as we can. So we started here with a string mechanism that uses, it's almost like a badge reel. You can pull it out, it comes back in, but the issue is, is it needs to lock. So once it does lock, it holds out completely and it doesn't come back in and it utilizes a, a mechanism similar to like a, a climber um, when they have the belayer on the ground, releasing tension or adding that, that bite to the, to the rope and it holds it out and it all does that passively, which is a main design point that we wanted to integrate with our bot, especially since we're so constricted on space and we want to work on this tier three, we don't want to limit ourselves by using up all the space for just a string mechanism. So as soon as we lift up our intake, it retracts it with no extra parts, just by utilizing the spring on the inside of this reel here. And so with this in mind, we use this advantage of, of starting distance with the addition of our mobile goal hook. Now this is about our third iteration. Again, this is 3D printed for weight, and it's this draft PLA, which is very flexible. It's not too rigid. We can move it, we can flex it, and it won't snap, or at least snap yet. Um, it allows us to get an extra reach into those mobile goals and pull them back as soon as we can at auto, and then we chose to do it off the backside because it allows us to very easily integrate our code to just turn to the side and clamp this lock and clamp to ensure that we get this possession of this goal as soon as we can in the match. Let's wrap on this robot pass over to Austin. Uh, talk about, you got a custom PCB. I'd love to hear more about that as well. And then uh, utilizing VexBridge as well too. Let's talk more about how this all kind of integrates together. Yeah, sure. So why decide early on that uh, trying to debug programs and software with Vex, it can often be a pain in the butt just because of uh, the limited availability of being able to debug values, being able to get values back with the robot, being able to print values, especially when the robot is running around the field all over the place. So we designed a system called VexBridge. It's basically a small custom PCB here that adapts into the normal Vex V5 connector and it allows us to connect into a typical Raspberry Pi like you'd see uh, in other vision applications. And we have software running on it that allows us to debug a variety of other values on it. So for example, we can see the robot movement as it's moving around the field here. This is just showing odometry. 
uh, we can graph values. It helps a lot for PID. So as the robot moves around, you can see uh, the values pop up and down there. It allows us to view log values and it allows us to view the hardware statuses so we can see if values are disconnected with the robot or if things are uh, disconnecting, reconnecting randomly throughout the match, which uh, can happen if you have like bad cables, for example. Devils, this is a very complete system here and it's really cool to watch you on the field and everything goes into it. So congratulations, putting together an awesome set of robots here. And I think a lot of great things, uh, even just past robot, a lot of great individual mechanisms teams can dive into, a lot of great software as well too, and a lot of stuff teams can learn. So thanks a lot. Can't wait to see how you do uh, here, but honestly, keep up the great work and inspiring the community. Really appreciate it and appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.